I've seen in the news, it may not be extraterrestrial life, it could even be interdimensional, some sort of interdimensional being. I try to think, what is an interdimensional being? What, what does that mean? What would it look like? How can we look through other dimensions? Welcome guys, a little different video this week. Had some amazing interview with Lou Elizondo on Artisan Tony's podcast and also with Alexei Novitsky. Alexei Novitsky has some amazing theories. Artisan Tony actually put us in contact together and it seems like our theories both kind of align. Mine on size dimensions that we're in a larger organism and his on were basically frequency relationships and that's how matter is manifesting. Very interesting, again, all theories but I feel like with theories now, we have something to aim at and we can actually make some, some actual scientific experiments. Knowing is half the battle, right? Thanks for being here. Go to patreon.com forward slash Chris if you wanna support the team and get special merchandise coming out. If you do like this content, smash that like button, subscribe, I release videos every Friday and I try and read all the comments. So let me know what you think, onto the video. I've heard that it could be not just extraterrestrial life, but interdimensional life. What could interdimensional life look like? How could we experience another dimension? I've been working with Alexei for the past several months trying to determine how we could consider different dimensions. So I have a working theory that Lou knew very well. It's almost as if he made it up himself. He said it better than, than I could have. I had the amazing opportunity to be on a working round table with Lou Elizondo, the man, the legend, really who started us on the path to disclosure. He says on the podcast immediately after this one, he ran from, from Artis and Tony's podcast, the one I was on, the round table with Alexei Novitsky. Lou ran to that one to Vinny at Disclosure Team. Amazing YouTube channel. Please follow him. Please watch Vinny. And Lou actually gives up a lot more kind of uh, UAP intel or you know data, if you will, on that podcast. Uh, we're going to be make if you think we've made a splash so far, you ain't seen nothing yet. Um, we, you, there's going to be some announcements this year, I think, that are, that are going to hopefully resonate. That's <laughs> what he said on that podcast. So amazing. Yeah, go check them out. Check them both out. I've watched them several times already. The working group I did with Lou Elizondo and Artisan Tony's was more metaphysical. And it was really Lou Elizondo asking these unbelievable questions, just amazing questions. And it reminded me of one of my, one of my recent favorite books. Elon Musk's favorite philosophy book is Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, one of the philosophies in that book is the questions are just as important, if not more important than the answer. And right now, from my impression from this working round table, Lou Elizondo, is we just don't know even the right questions to ask at this point. There's just such a difference in our understanding of reality and the universe and what we're seeing from these UAP events. It's been going on for many decades. The two main points from this podcast that really blew my mind uh, was the first one, okay? We've been thinking about this interdimensional telescope with Alexei, is how could you actually observe other dimensions? Is it possible to change your perception? And Alexei uh, believes we can test, at least we can make tests to, to test for it. But I asked, what would it even mean if we could observe another dimension? What would it appear? What would it look like? And so this is the answer that, that Lou gave. This is right. You have an X axis, a Y axis, and a Z axis, meaning I can go, for example, in late, late, late terms, I can go forward and backwards. I can go left and right, and I can go up and down. And, and a variation of those allows me to have any point in a three-dimensional space. A fourth dimension might be, for example, if you were a human being and you didn't go anywhere, you just got smaller. You started to withdraw. You started to go inward, right? You're not going outwards in any particular direction. You're actually going in to the universe. Um, that may be a very, you know, a very rudimentary way to explain of what a fourth dimension could be experienced like. You're not going forward, back, left, or right, or up, or down at all. You're actually going inside. What an amazing response from Lou Elizondo. I've been trying to consider what another dimension would look like. I do believe it's all based on sizes, but I think the actual matter that we're seeing is manifested from frequencies, ultimately, right? We never really touch, right? We never really touch. It's just the uh, little electrons, right? Little forces smaller than we can imagine. Nothing actually touch, it's really just wavelengths. So he does bring on later, what about size? How far away are the stars actually? When we look at the ground, how close actually is? We've been considering interdimensional telescope, which would be some sort of gyroscopic machine that can maybe electromagnetically spin so fast, right? So if you have a, if you have a sphere and you have some sort of noble gas in there, this is in one of the patents, 
um, and you're able to electronically charge it, electrically charge it, now you can spin it so fast you can build up angular momentum to certain frequencies, right? Maybe this could cause some sort of effect into the light state and could change our perception. Meaning inside you could observe other dimensions. I don't know if this could possibly be what we're seeing because there's no sonic booms. You know, are the things actually here or are they observing from another dimension? You know, maybe there are other ways to interact than we can fully understand. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Mind altering <laughs> drugs. Uh, the idea is they would fry your brain, right? That was always the idea is that drugs would actually fry your brain by overstimulation. But what they found recently, right, is that the drugs actually decrease your brain activity. They actually decrease the activity of your brain. An extraordinary set of results emerging from research on the psychedelic state uh, uh, begun in 2012, begun with this paper from the Imperial College London. Uh, for the longest time, we assumed that the way psychedelics produce this incredibly rich and intense hallucinations uh, would be by sort of lighting up your brain like a Christmas tree uh, to cause these hallucinations because we thought uh, uh, brain activity somehow is or generates experience. So if you had incredibly rich and intense experiences, then you have to have a lot of brain activity that correlates with that uh, inner experience. But uh, this study showed precisely the opposite. Um, under psilocybin, cerebral blood flow, which correlates with brain metabolism and therefore brain activity. When I say activity, what I mean is metabolism, the level of metabolism in different brain areas. Uh, what happens to, to metabolism is that it decreases. The blue areas here show decreases in brain activity in the psychedelic state compared to placebo. Notice that there is no increase anywhere. Psychedelics only decrease brain activity. And this result has now been repeated, not only for psilocybin, but for LSD, for, for DMT, a number of other psychedelics. The results have been confirmed by a number of research groups in different universities, different uh, universities, different countries, different continents. And they are surprisingly consistent. Psychedelics only reduce brain activity, brain metabolism. Now, how do we then explain experience? Well, it's at least very uncomfortable, very tricky, very difficult to explain experience based on the assumptions of mainstream physicalism given these results. So just as a theory, could the brain be more of a receiver and transmitter instead of an actual producer of everything that we see? Or right? maybe just is a perception machine, like an avatar that perceives reality. If reality is just perceptions based on manifestation of light that we happen to be in synchronicity with, right? So if it's just perceptions of frequencies and wavelengths, maybe there's a way to use some sort of gyroscopic recession to actually perceive other different universes or just take mind altering substances. Uh, but you know, I can't recommend that definitely until it's safe, but I, we should definitely be researching it in scientific studies, for instance. Second point that blew my mind is I explained my dark matter is life basic theory that we are inside of a much larger organism to, to Lou, and his answer was just uh, was amazing. What I really learned from him out of this, like I mentioned, the Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy story at the beginning, is his questions, man. His questions are so awesome. So when I explain my larger than, than life theory here, watch, watch what his answer is, and it's really a question. Watch what his next question is. So why is it as humans then we we are are stuck in these spirals? Why why is it that, you know, we uh, we collectively as a species tend to self identify um, as some specific identity, whether it is national or religious or organizationally or socially, we tend to group ourselves into these little herds or packs, if you will, and self identify if that is what's actually holding us back from experiencing, you know, the bigger part of the universe. Yeah, why, why were we given egos? <laughs> I, yeah. I, well, you mentioned uh, gravity. Um, I think that's kind of the force at a higher dimension. So my if uh, my actual theory, Lou is, um, you know, we're, we're made of uh, many different cells, right? I already mentioned kind of trillions of cells. 
I believe that yeah, um, we're a collective, right? I mean, we really, yeah. at the end of the day, we are, we, we identify, so this is me, but in reality, it's not me. It's we, because we, I'm a collective yes. of, of, of microorganisms. Exactly. And I think it, it, we just stop at us at the human level, you know, as we go down, you know, you're made up of little organisms, you know, little cells working together, little teams, you know, they die in your organism. They're born more born every day. They do their little jobs. Um, and so I, you mentioned, why do we do that? What we do? I think it's a, we're little stem cells. You know, if you look at humans, uh, we can, we can be trained, we can be propagandized and we grow into little groups, you know, so it's like the gravity of our dimension. Um, and, and we Let build up you, a micro organism. So then that, that asks the, the, the question that we always have in mathematics, that the sum can never be greater than its constituent parts, but is the human being or is sentient life? just that is it that you now have reach a critical point a critical mass of collectives organisms of cells organizationally where all of a sudden the we now identifies as a single organism as a me and now all of a sudden i the mm -hmm. the, the collection of all these cells that make up lou elizondo something happens it reaches this critical mass where all of a sudden it becomes sentient self-aware and now it, it, it is truly a single organism. Is there some sort of connective tissue, so to speak, uh, you know, obviously proverbially amongst those smaller living organisms that now create, you know, a, a, a single, a, a single consciousness. Sentience. No, that relates to what like Chris always likes to say, like, like uh, every country is an organism, right? Because the people kind of, you That's know. my point. That's exactly. exactly where I was going with. And, and the yeah. planet is an organism, right? Exactly. And you yeah. can, and frankly, you can keep continue going out, as you say, from, 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 as a fractal perspective, you know, uh, enough of anything potentially could have its uh, could, you know, but, I mean, I'm, I'm no different than matter that's in me. The atoms that are in me are the same atoms that are in the earth and that are the same atoms on the moon and everything else. Uh, is this where some people, and again, I don't know, I'm asking the question hypothetically, is this where some people have the notion that everything in the universe is connected? Perhaps is that is that where they're 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 getting that from? And that's what he asked there. What is the sentience? Is there a, a oneness that it goes back into? Again, metaphysical discussion. But we lead back into: Can you make an AI sentient? He asked that question. Can we make an artificial intelligence sentient? And what does it mean to be human? These are the questions he asked. Those are the questions that they need uh, answers to, is what it sounds like. If you look at countries, I mentioned Russia invading Ukraine. Look at how the decision was actually made. It's not just one man coming up with the decision. It came through at least the nation. The nation had to be involved, right? If it was one man making the decision, <laughs> it wouldn't matter. But it's one man in that position, right? It was one particular person who happened to be in that seat, which means he comes from that country, that the actual decision to invade was made at a biological level. I was always growing up wondering like, if we're in the information age, where is all the information? And I think that we're, we're getting to it, man. We are getting into the information age. I can't imagine a more exciting time to live, you know, especially if you wanna know, I really wanna know. And it looks like we are going to at least learn a lot more than we currently know, which is, which is just amazing to me. Imagine if we could actually see or observe other dimensions, if we could <laughs> warp space and gravity. I mean, that would just be unbelievable. But it sounds like we have a lot of growing up to do. And some of those questions need to actually take serious consideration. What is gravity? What is energy? Can an AI be sentient? What is sentience? What does it mean to be human? Amazing questions. I think for one thing, if you can look at the points, right? If you imagine YouTube, okay, we're able to answer these questions because we're actually building our own network. Okay, there's nothing in between me and Lou, at least nothing that we know of, right? Nothing that we know of. We are able to interact, right? Our two neurons in this network, which is now growing and growing. The question is, can we, can we write humans into the equation? You know, we need to be a part of the discussion in the future. We, I think we should figure out very quickly what it means to actually be human because pretty soon AI is gonna be coming online. And I think we need to kind of get our stuff together. If it hasn't already come online, okay, we need to get, get our stuff together and figure some of these big questions out and realize that shooting each other is not going to solve it. Doing uh, negative things to the environment, to the world, is not gonna help us solve this. 
Thanks so much for your support. Thanks to all my patrons that support me on patreon.com and through watching on YouTube. Thank you guys as well. I'm able to do this full time uh, and I am dedicated to, to it. If you want to join the team, go to patreon.com forward slash Chris Lato. Uh, you can join and be part of the backstage of support. We'll have some special merch coming for patrons only. But as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Peace.